Hello and welcome to Breezy Chatter. Today I'm going to be talking about Ready to Love episode five. So we are down to eight women, eight men. And the women will be meeting with Uncle Tommy at the ladies lounge and they will have the power to eliminate. Uncle Tommy surprises the ladies and he lets them know that they will be going to a pool party. So all of the women are super excited. They're going to get to see the guys and see their buff bodies. So um, the pool party starts and everyone's there. You see Corey and Mumin. They're posing, taking pictures together. And then we see Corey saying that he wants to do something special for Mumin and he wants to do something special for Courtney. And then we see Camille and Cornelius. They seem to be wearing matching outfits. They didn't do it on purpose, but they look cute together. And then uh, Courtney has been receiving these little love notes. And she's been reading them. And um, one of the notes read um, that you're my first crush. Courtney was really eating those notes up. She said she is a hopeless romantic. And she clearly has to be if she believes that any of those men have never had a crush before. <laughs> I mean, first crush? Come on now. So um, she did ask people, did they have any idea who could be sending the notes? One of the gentlemen said, oh, I think it's Corey. <laughs> so then um, we see Tyrone and he's uh, talking to Shiloh and he's letting Shiloh know that she's marriage material for him. You know, he could actually see her as his wife. Shiloh's really flattered by what he's saying, but she's not there yet. She said she wants to stay true to herself and the process, and she's not making any commitments at this time. Uh, Tyrone respected that, but he went and pushed the envelope because he went and met with Sabrina, another woman he was connecting with. And she had such nice things to say about him. And she said she really enjoys his company and their conversations. And he sort of just cut her down. He wasn't cold about it, but he just said, well, Shiloh's the one for me. You know, I could see myself marrying her. And Sabrina was not happy about that. At that point, he's a man who's certain and he knows what he wants and he's not interested in anyone else. Um, I wouldn't have said that, but when you know, you know, right? If, if that's the only person you're interested in and... If you can't be with that person, you're not really interested in anyone else, then go for it. Uh, then Uncle Tommy comes along and introduces two new singles. So the singles are Sean and Sydney. Sean is super attractive, a uh, very nice looking man. Uh, when Sean comes out, the women are really excited to see him. But when Sydney comes out, they're, <laughs> they're giving this woman the stank eye. Zadi is saying, oh, we don't need any more people here. And Phil, when he saw Sean, he's like, oh boy, I have enough competition. We don't need anyone else here. I thought it was funny. So there was a little scene uh, where Zadia, Sean, Sydney, and Camille were talking. And it seemed like uh, Sean and Sydney were, talk were having more of a conversation. So Zadia is going to say, oh, why don't we leave you guys alone or give you some space to talk? And Sean was really cool. He said, I thought we were having a group conversation. So I don't know what was going on with Zadia. I don't know if she's feeling away because Sydney's there. Um, but that wasn't really called for. I thought that was a little bit messy. And then uh, Camille is going to set Sean straight <laughs> and let him know that she is already taken. Okay. She's with Cornelius. So he said, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well. Next. <laughs> so um, we do see Frank and Sydney. Turns out that they know each other. They have mutual friends and they have a mutual work lifestyle. So I guess they're going to take some time and get to know each other. And uh, Cornelius and Sydney were talking uh, for a brief moment. And of course, while they were talking, you know, Hawkeye was watching them, Camille, and she was having a freak out moment. She was talking to Mumin and she's like, oh, my God, he, they're over there talking. And Mumin is like, relax, relax. And um, <laughs> Mumin says, Cornelius, I'm praying for you, guy. So when Camille finally gets a moment alone with Cornelius, she's giving him the third degree. Like, why are you talking? Pretty much, why are you talking to her? And he, you know, this guy, I feel so bad for him because he doesn't know how to tell her to back off. 
he was rolling his eyes. I mean, she was calling him names. She called him a country bumpkin. <laughs> she said he was dumb. She was telling him he couldn't have his cake and eat it too. And he was saying he was disturbed. He was disturbed by the way she was talking to him. So later on, she must have came to her senses or maybe she felt like, you know, he was about to dip on her. She did apologize. Camille apologized uh, to Cornelius and Cornelius accepted Camille's apology. uh, And he was also stating that the fact that she apologizes shows a level of maturity. Uh, I don't think so. I think she apologized out of fear because she knew that she she pushed she pushed maybe a little bit too hard and that maybe that would have been the ammunition you needed to tell her to kick rocks. But uh, he accepted the apology. But I will say he was saying other things, other red flags or other. He was giving off other signs that he's like ready to bounce. He said he was feeling stifled. He was saying he didn't know if he was going to have the liberty to get to know other people. So he's not free. This man is, is in prison. So, you know, he is suffocating under Camille's watch. And I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to take it. So also, uh, Mumin uh, didn't miss an opportunity to talk to Corey and ask him if he was the one sending the love notes to Courtney. Of course, he can't answer a question because he's just, He's just a sneaky, slimy kind of person. I don't know. I just don't like his energy. At first, I kind of felt bad for him. The first episode when the women were getting on him for um, trying to run game on them. I, I said he had the right idea, but the wrong approach. But actually, no, he's just he's just Sleezo. I'm sorry. He's just Mr. Sleezo. So um, his response was, did you see me sending any notes? <laughs> He even said when Mumin asked him the question, his first thought was to deflect. So he never answered the question. Mumin was not born yesterday. She even said, you're not answering the question. So what does he do? What, what, do, what does he do or what do some guys like to do to try to um, Jedi mind trick women and make them think that the relationship is going further than it actually is? Oh, I would like you to meet my family. So... You know, that was exciting to Mumin. She said, you know, that's a, that's a big step. You've talked about your family. Uh, I, would, I would like to think that you're serious about that. So because of the way he's been, you know, he's been moving from the beginning, she's questioning him. She doesn't really trust him, but she'd like to think that he wouldn't play around with his family, you know, inviting her or saying he'd like her to meet his family and not really meaning it. And he said he's never, he wouldn't lie to her. He wouldn't lie to her. That's what he said. I said, yeah, you won't lie, but you won't tell the truth either. <laughs> so uh, she's, she's between a rock and a hard place with him. So now the ladies meet up with nephew Tommy and they talk about their connections. Uh, Sydney said she was feeling Dante and Frank. Shiloh uh, likes Phil and, and she likes Tyrone as well. Tasia has a connection with Phil, although she said it's quite early. Uh, Courtney uh, said, you know, she's been interested in Cornelius and Corey. Uh, Mumin says she's interested in Corey. But um, Courtney started talking about the love notes that she was receiving at the pool party. And she even brought the notes with her to the ladies lounge. And she was reading them out loud and saying that she's his number one since day one. And Mumin said, well, Corey told me I was his main woman. So they started talking and putting two and two together. And they just realized that Corey is just running game. And he has no game. He's running a tired game. (laughs) It's so tired that it doesn't take long for these women to figure it out. So, um, you know, the bottom two were Corey and Tyrone. Courtney had the pleasure of meeting with Corey. And Shiloh met with Tyrone. Uh, Shiloh and Tyrone's meeting was nice. Uh, she let him down easy. She, she let him know that, you know, she's just not ready. Uh, he's not ready to love first off and that she wasn't ready to make a a decision. And Tyrone was fine with it. He said he has no regrets. And if he had to do it all over again, he would have done nothing differently. So he left, he went home, no problems, uh, no issues there. Now, Corey, on the other hand, Courtney told him that he was not ready to love. 
And he has the nerve to say something along the lines of, I thought you'd, I thought you had my back. Have your back? How? You've been telling lies to everyone. (laughs) He said, this guy's crazy. But anyway, he got sent packing. And that was the best double elimination I've seen in a while, where two people who actually deserve to get the boot got the boot. So, goodbye. (laughs) hope you guys enjoyed my commentary if you did hit the like button hit subscribe add some comments down below deeply appreciate all your time and support until next time ta-ta